In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve rational equations. To solve rational equations, it is convenient to first eliminate the denominator so that you don't have to work with a fraction. Now to do this, you can multiply every term by the lowest common denominator. Now by every term, what I mean is that left side and the right side, so every single term, whether it's a constant or whether it's a variable. And LCD is an abbreviation that we will use for the lowest common denominator. Now remember, to find the lowest common denominator, you must factor first. If you don't factor, then your denominator is going to be very, very big. Now one other thing that we want to do um, as we're solving, or maybe even at the very beginning, is to find any non-permissible values. Because if our solution happens to be a non-permissible value, then we know that it's not going to be one of the solutions. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. So we have um, two denominators here, and they're already factored. So our lowest common denominator is x plus 3 and x minus 4. So what happens is that when I multiply this LCD to the left fraction, the x plus 3s are going to cancel off. So I'm going to be left with x and then x minus 4. On the right side, when I multiply my LCD by the right side fraction, the x minus 4s cancel off, and then I'm going to have 2x and x plus 3. So let's distribute. So x squared minus 4x equals 2x squared plus 6x. Move everything to one side. And I can factor here. So I'm going to factor out the x. And then I have x plus 10. So I have two x's, so I'm going to have two solutions. I have x is 0, given this first term. And then here, x is negative 10. <coughs> Excuse me. So based on my, equation, my question, my non-permissible values are negative 3 and 4. And those weren't my solutions. So these two actually work. And you can plug them in. And you can check that these two solutions do indeed work. All right, let's take a look at the second one. Now, for this one here, I can see that my bottom fraction here in the right side, I actually can factor it, so I'm going to do that first. I don't have to worry about factoring the numerator. It doesn't matter what's happening in the numerator. That won't affect my denominator. So I have 2 and then 2x plus 5. So by factoring, I can see that now both of these have a 2 in it. So I don't need an extra 2 like I thought maybe at the beginning I might need to. So my LCD is actually going to be 2 times 2x plus 5. So when I multiply the first term, I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 2x plus 5. My second term, I'm going to have the 2 and the 2 cancelling off. So I actually only left with the 2x plus 5. And then when I multiply the last term, the right term, the 2 and the 2x plus 5 completely cancel off. So I'm only left with 1 plus 4x minus x squared. So I'm going to expand everything. Be careful with distributing the negative. And then what we'll do is move everything to one side. I prefer to make the x squared term to be positive. So I'm going to move everything to the right. So we've got 5x squared plus 11x minus 19. <coughs> now, this one I don't think I can factor. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I have negative 11 plus or minus 11 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 19. And then all of this is 2 divided by 2 times 5. Okay, let's simplify my inside. And all of that becomes 501 divided by 10. And I can't simplify the 501. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and I can't simplify this, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, let's go back uh, my non-permissible values here. If I look at my in my factored form, I can see that x 
can't equal negative 5 over 2. But that wasn't my solution. So again, those two solutions are okay. And you can plug it in by using your calculator and typing this all out and then saving or storing it and then using it once on the left side and then also plugging it into the right side to make sure the left side and the right side are equal. All right, let's go to my next question. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, I'm going to factor my first, my denominator. So I have x minus 4 and x plus 4. Now the plus 1 is separate. Now, when I factored here, I can now see that my LCD is going to be x minus 4 and x plus 4. All right, so when I multiply the first term, the whole denominator cancels off, so I'm left with 8 plus. When I multiply the second term, nothing cancels off because there is no denominator. So I have x minus 4 and x plus 4. The right side term, the x minus 4s cancel off, and I have x plus 4. So let me just expand this. Move everything to one side. And this one is nicely factorable, so I'm going to do that. So we get x minus 4, x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals 4 and a to 3. All right, so going back to my question, I can see from my factored form that x cannot equal 4 or negative 4. Since that's one of my solutions, this 4 is actually an extraneous root. So therefore, my only solution is x equal to negative 3. All right, last one here. Lots of things to factor. We don't obviously want to multiply these three denominators here to get this humongous low common denominator. We will, don't feel it won't be the lowest. So let's factor, and hopefully we will see that we will have some factors that are common so we don't have to multiply all of them out. So I get x plus 2 and x minus 1. And then the last term I get x minus 3 and x plus 2. <coughs> so looking at my denominators, I can see they all have, oh, they have an x minus 3 and 2 of them. Two of them have an x minus 1, and then two of them have an x plus 2. So I'm going to write my lowest common denominator up here. It's x minus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 2. All right, so when I multiply this lowest LCD uh, to the first fraction, the x minus 3 and x minus 1 cancel off, so I'm going to be left with the x plus 2. So I have 2x plus 1 and x plus 2 minus. Do that with the second term, and I'm left with x minus 3. Do this with the last term, and I'm going to be left with the x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to expand. And here I have 3x squared, negative 9 plus 2, so it's going to be 7x minus 6 equals to 4x minus 4. Now notice that when I multiply this, um, the second term here, I left it in brackets. Now the reason I did that was because I know this is minus, so in the end I'm actually going to have to subtract each of these terms. So I thought it would be best that I remember to do that by leaving it factored. All right, so 2x squared minus 3, I get negative x squared. And then 5x minus negative 7 is going to be plus 12x. And then 2 minus negative 6 will be 8, equal to 4x minus 4. Move all the terms to one side. Minus 12x, we get negative 8x minus 8, minus 8 here, get negative 12. And again, actually, I can see that this one can factor. So, can it factor actually? Hold on. Um, negative 4 and 3, 6 and 2. Oh, actually, it can't because this is a negative. So, let's plug it into the quadratic formula. Okay, so when I plug it in, I get 8 plus or minus. And this will be negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 12. All divided by 2. 
and let's simplify my inside. I get 112, 64 plus 48. All of this divided by 2. And just because I've done this before, I know that 16 goes into 112. So this will be 4 root 7, all divided by 2. Now notice that the 8, the 4, and the 2 are all divisible by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my radical here, or my expression here, to be 4 plus or minus 2 root 7. Now going back, we can see that our non-permissible values, based on our denominators here, are 3, 1, and negative 2. And since those aren't the solutions, then our, my solution should be OK. And you can, again, plug it in to check. The left side here is equal to the right side when you plug in 4 plus or minus 2 root 7.